Order, order. We now come to the motion for the unopposed return. Minister to move. Brilliant nod. We now come to questions to the Secretary of State for Wales. We start with Jerome Mayhew. Number one, sir. Secretary of State. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I am honoured to be taking my first question to the Secretary of State. And I would ask the House to remember that this Friday marks the 56th anniversary of the Aberfan disaster, which, even with the passage of time, remains searingly painful. We will never forget, and we will still mourn, all those who lost their lives. Mr Speaker, my, my department has worked alongside the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities to ensure the free ports offer works for Wales, and over the summer we successfully agreed a prospectus for Wales with the Welsh Government, which was launched in early September. This takes us one step closer to investment, growth and long-term prosperity. Right, Jerome May. Mr Speaker, may I be the first person to welcome my right hand friend to his place? and to align myself with his views, uh, his comments about the Aberfan disaster. I remember as a child of roughly the same age being taught about it in school, and it made a deep, a profound and lasting impression on me. By making it easier and cheaper to do business, free ports not only drive local and regional growth, but national growth as well, growing the size of the pies, we've learned to call it. Can my right honourable friend give further details on how free ports in Wales can help to level up local areas with their prosperity? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very grateful to my honourable friend, and indeed we are committed to establishing at least one free port in Wales uh, by summer of next year, with £26 million in seed funding. Now, the bidding process is still open, Mr Speaker, but I'm sure we will see some excellent bids. Uh, and for example, uh, estimates made in the Teesside Freeport and Freeport, Freeport East initiatives have both stated that they will create more than 18,000 jobs and provide a £3.2 billion boost to their local economies, and I would anticipate a similar boost to the Welsh economy. Ron Davis. Yeah, Mr Speaker, I just returned from the WTO in Geneva as Rapporteur for the Council of Europe, and there is some concern there about how free ports might undermine internationally agreed labour standards and indeed be a safe haven for carbon intensive uh, production. Uh, what assurances, uh, what, what meetings has he had with the WTO about this? Will he meet with me about this and give you give assurances there will be no reduction in labour standards or sort of dirty production? in these free ports. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm always happy to meet with the Honourable Gentleman, with whom I've enjoyed, enjoyed, enjoyed a lively exchange over the years. Can I assure him that in the prospectus he will see specific reference to the, uh, the Welsh uh, Senedd's uh, Wellbeing Act, which was passed some years ago, and together with assurances as to our UK government standards, I can, I can assure him that the sort of concerns that have been outlined are unfounded and that he will find encouragement from the Green initiatives that I'm sure will thrive with the free ports project. So the Secretary of State, Joe Stevens. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And on behalf of the Labour Party, and particularly my friend, the Honourable Member for Merthyr Tydfil and Romney, we are all thinking of the community of Aberfan this week. Uh, can I welcome the Secretary of State to his new role? He must be very pleased, following his summer U-turn, that the uh, Prime Minister has been taking daily lessons from him. But, Mr Speaker, the Welsh Government Finance Minister, Rebecca Evans, is now dealing with her sixth Chief Secretary to the Treasury. So can the Secretary of State explain how it's possible to, to progress the Welsh Freeport's prospectus with such an appallingly chaotic an unstable UK government ahead of the 31st of October budget announcement. Well, I'm very grateful to the Honourable Lady, and I can assure her that the time that I've had as Secretary of State has been time well spent. Through the summer, I made sure that the prospectus process for the Freeport initiative was uh, maintained. And I worked with the then Secretary of State for levelling up to make that so. I can assure you we've not lost a beat in uh, my time in office, and the fact that there may be changes in personnel does not change the government's growth strategy, which remains on course and deserves, I think, the support of all sides of the House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Mr Speaker, the budget's been ripped up, the manifesto's been ripped up, but there we go. Um, the government's original approach had been to ignore devolution and impose a free port on Wales. Now, the Welsh Government put a stop to that and to the harm to the environment, workers' rights and Wales's finances that this would have caused. And the Government's latest version of free ports appear to be investment zones. Has the Secretary of State actually seen any evidence that proves his Government's claim that they create growth rather than just displace it? 
Secretary of State. Well, I, I'm concerned that my honourable friend doesn't uh, share the enthusiasm that I have for free ports and investment zones. I think the example from the past in Wales, when inspirational secretaries of state like the late Lord Crickell, Peter Walker, and the Lord Hunter Wirral demonstrated that through enterprise zones and the Development Bay Corporation, for example, in Cardiff, that the economy was transformed and regenerated. I am confident that in our approach to investment zones, we will uh, uh, make sure that Wales shares in the growing prosperity that we want to see right across our United Kingdom. And I believe that it will generate more investment and to grow that economic pie that is the aspiration of this government. Yeah. Let's double Roberts. Yeah. 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 This government has been forced to U-turn on its fundamental ideology that slashing taxes magically leads to economic growth. That same ideology underpins free ports and investment zones. Both will shrink the UK government's tax revenue and, in turn, the Welsh government's budget, which is already facing a £4 billion shortfall. With inflation now over 10 per cent, what is he doing in Cabinet to protect Wales's budget? Uh, no state. Well, I, I, I'm, I, I'm grateful to uh, the Right Honourable Lady, uh, and I yield to no one in my admiration of her, but she has now laid bare Plaid Cymru's ideological approach to things. They believe that it should be an ever-shrinking share of wealth that means that our public services will decline. We, on this side of the House, believe that the way to pay for public services is to grow our economy, and it's through initiatives like the Free Port and Investment Zones that we, we will do just that. And I do hope the Welsh public note Plaid Cymru's ideological opposition to growth. The Secretary of State is on record as saying he believes it is right to make cuts to public spending. And that was before last week's multiple U-turns. Now, according to the Glasgow Centre for Population Health, the last Tory austerity experiment led to 335,000 excess deaths. How many excess deaths is he prepared to justify this time round? I am sorry, hyperbole from the Right Honourable Lady does not uh, at all help her case. And we are not talking about so called austerity, but we are talking about making sure that the public spending round that was agreed last year will be efficiently and wisely spent. And I said that it was right for each department to look carefully at its priorities to make sure that frontline services, the sort of services that I know she and I believe in, uh, are maintained uh, for the benefit of the citizens we serve. Stuart C. Macdonald. Yeah, yeah. Number two, please, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, with permission, I will answer questions 2, 5, 11, and 15 together. We have taken action to support households and businesses across Great Britain, including Wales, through uh, schemes such as the en Energy Bill Relief Scheme and the £400 Energy Bill Rebate. The Welsh Government has been very well funded to deliver their re re devolved responsibilities, with the largest ever block grant of £18 billion in the 2021 spending review. Stuart Sue Bangle. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Secretary of State's U-turn during the Tory leadership election was indeed truly eye-catching. But the U-turn most concerning people in Wales just now is the government's U-turn on properly protecting benefits and pensions uh -huh. against skyrocketing yes. inflation. Yeah. Is the Minister going to be U-turning on that commitment too, or will he fight a good fight in favour of proper operating? Yeah. yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, this government will always be committed to supporting the least well-off, and that is, of course, why we have uh, come forward with schemes such as this £650 payment for those who are on benefits, £300 for pensioner households, and £150 for those who are disabled. If the Honourable Gentleman is really worried about the cost of living, perhaps it is time that he got his government to start supporting the new nuclear, the new oil and gas bills that we so desperately need for that energy that people want. And, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I've just come from cheering the APPG on poverty, where we've heard that the cost of living crisis will exacerbate the digital divide um, that is experienced by so many people in poorer communities. Will the Minister agree to meet with the APPG on poverty to look at how that impacts people in Carmarthenshire, in Carmyle, and right across these islands? Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I meet with stakeholders who uh, are dealing with poverty all of the time. But if the Honourable Gentleman is interested in dealing with poverty, perhaps he'll be able to find out from his own SNP government why poverty levels in Scotland are growing and why it is that even the Labour Party in Wales are doing a better job of dealing with child poverty 
than the Honourable Gentleman's Government. Yeah. Patricia Gibson. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Secretary of State does like, love to tell a good story, doesn't he? The UK <laughs> Government the UK government has already slashed devolved budgets by billions this financial year, and on Monday, the Chancellor announced plans for millions of pounds supposed to come to devolved nations for cost of living support now to be abandoned. How does the Secretary of State think that slashing devolved budgets supports the supposed levelling up agenda? Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, just to be clear, the Honourable Lady gave me a bit of a promotion there. I am actually the Minister, not the Secretary of State. But, uh, but, Mr. Speaker, the, I'm, not, I'm not telling stories, Mr. Speaker. The figures about child poverty in Scotland come from Audit Scotland, which is responsible to the Scottish Government. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I suggest that the Honourable Lady takes, uh, takes a look at the other figures, which show that far from cutting the devolved budget, the, well, the UK Government has increased it every single year to Wales by £2 billion in the last financial year. Martin Day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hundreds of thousands will find themselves in fuel poverty should average energy costs rise to the estimated £4,347 a year in April next year as a result of the government rolling back on its own proposals. So, how does the minister claim that his party is fighting the cost of living crisis when his government is cutting back on the few measures it has announced before they are even implemented? Yeah. I'm afraid I didn't hear all of the question, but I believe the honourable gentleman mentioned fuel poverty, and I would just remind him once again that this government is doing absolutely everything possible to make sure that people in this country can get access to the cheap gas, the cheap electricity, and the cheap petrol which they need. And it is members of the honourable gentleman's government in Scotland which are doing their best to prevent that from happening. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In welcoming the contributions from our friends from the Scottish National Party to this Wales Office question, can I just politely remind them that this is a government that in March 2020 stepped in to save thousands of businesses in every single one of our constituencies, protecting hundreds of thousands of jobs. And doesn't that, Mr. Speaker, demonstrate that the value of staying part of the strong United <coughs> Kingdom, and it demonstrates that this is a government that doesn't walk away from serious challenges but meets them head on. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the honourable gentleman, the right honourable gentleman, makes an excellent point. I couldn't put it better than myself. This government will stand for the union, but also stand for the least well-off in society. Virginia Crosby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nearly 60% of my constituents on Honest Morn rely on off grid energy for heating. The average cost of filling an oil tank has almost doubled in the last year. On behalf of my Honest Morn constituents, will the Minister look at more targeted support for those on off grid heating and LPG gas? Well, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Lady makes a very important point. The Government have obviously already come through with a £100 payment for those who are off grid. Uh, but I believe that there are genuine issues there, and, and she makes a very good point. And I'm sure that our colleagues in Bayes and the Treasury will be looking carefully at what the Honourable Lady has said today. Alan Kern. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The Minister has referred to the significant increases in the Welsh Block Grant uh, over the last uh, 10 years. And this equates to £120 for every £100 that is spent in England. Now, in spite of this very fair settlement, accepted and recognised by the Welsh Government, uh, health waiting lists are longer, education standards are falling compared to the rest of the United Kingdom, and the economy is growing at a much, much slower pace. Does my honourable friend agree that the Welsh Government need to focus on the right priorities, investing in public services, and getting value for money? Well, Mr. Speaker. The right honourable gentleman, my right honourable friend, was actually responsible for making sure that the Welsh Government got a more generous package than they had previously, £1.20 for every pound that is spent in England. And therefore, it is very hard to understand why it is that under a Welsh Labour Government, the health service waiting lists have got longer, ambulance response times have got longer, people have lower standards of health care in Wales than they do under a Conservative run NHS in England, and Welsh Labour need to take responsibility for that. Yeah. Green. Question number three, Mr. Speaker. Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Secretary of State and I regularly engage with Cabinet Ministers on a range of transport measures. Over £340 million has already been provided for rail enhancements in Wales, including at Cardiff Central Station and for the electrification of the Seven Tunnel. Sir Green. The Minister for his response. Can the Minister explain why Wales is not receiving the £5 billion worth of consequential funding?
from HS2 that it's entitled to under the Barnet formula? And will he review this decision, something the Welsh Conservative Party is also calling for? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mr Speaker, HS2, of course, is a UK-wide project which is partly being brought forward in order to enable the maximum number of people to get out of their cars and get onto the trains and use public transport, something which I would have hoped that the Liberal Democrats would be fully supportive of. At the same time, the UK Government has not only been spending money improving the rail service in Wales, but improving the rail services for travellers who go from Wales into England, such as through the Seven Tunnel uh, electrification. The, Welsh, uh, the UK Government has an extremely good record on supporting railways in Wales. Jones. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Avanti trains sometimes trundle along the rail infrastructure of North Wales, but these days it's an increasingly infrequent occurrence. Avanti have provided a shockingly poor service to the people of North Wales, and many of my constituents were deeply unhappy when the Department for Transport decided to extend their franchise for a further six months. It was to give them a further chance. Can my honourable friend please urge his counterpart in the Department of Transport to make sure it is their last chance? Mr Speaker, a number of colleagues from North Wales have discussed Avanti's performance in in sort of colourful terms, and I'm sure uh, that they will have listened to what the Right Honourable Gentleman has had to say, as will the Department for Transport, who I can confirm will be assessing their performance before any further contracts are uh, given out. Shadow Minister Gerald Jones. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. It seems, Mr Speaker, that rewarding failure is this government's guiding principle. Even members on his own side agree. Avanti West Coast is the worst performing operator on the rail network, but ministers spent an eye-watering £4 million of taxpayers' money on bonuses to company executives for, quote, customer experience and acting as a good operator. Does the minister agree that this is simply not good enough for the businesses and the people of North Wales? Minister. Mr Speaker, I've already said that I accept that there have been many uh, concerns raised about Avanti's performance, but of course it all goes to show why it is important to modernise the rail network across the whole of Wales, and that is exactly what the UK Government are doing at the moment. Chris Elmore, number four, sir. Mr Speaker, I have regular discussions with Cabinet colleagues on a range of topics, and of course interest rates are rightly a matter for the Independent Bank of England. And we have announced unprecedented support for households and businesses, and through our cuts to stamp duty, the Welsh Government are expected to receive £70 million, enabling them to follow suit with cuts to land transaction tax in Wales. Chris Elmore. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On the weekend, I met a young couple in their early 30s who are coming out of a five-year fixed mortgage rate. Their mortgage is going up by more than £300 a month. And they squarely blame the government and the Prime Minister's poor mismanagement of our economy. It was the Conservative government that has U-turned that has caused the economic chaos. It's the Conservatives that has caused the mortgage rates to go through the roof. And it's the Conservative government that is causing mortgage firms to withdraw all their support. Will the Secretary of State now apologise to my constituents and people across the land who are being crippled by huge mortgage increases every single month? This is Conservative failure. And it is a Conservative government that, who helped to buy us, helped over 361,000 people uh, as first-time buyers onto the house, uh, housing ladder. It is a Conservative government that has led to unemployment at record lows, Mr Speaker. It is a Conservative government that has increased the national living wage to £9.50 per hour. And it is a Conservative government that will lead to interest rates being uh, uh, controlled, which will also help mortgage holders too. The Honourable Gentleman's hyperbole does not serve him well. Uh, Question number six. Secretary of State. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Most recent data demonstrates that households in Wales pay a price broadly on par with the average across Great Britain. On average, variable unit costs and standing charges for gas and electricity. And our energy price guarantee will save households hundreds of pounds this winter compared to current wholesale cost projections. Mr Speaker, my constituent, Mr Evans, in the town of Kidwelly, cannot benefit from a lower tariff for electricity he uses in off-peak times because, as the engineers have explained to him, the smart meter he needs will not function owing to the almost non-existent mobile phone signal in the area. 
That's a failure of this UK government both to roll out mobile phone technology and to have allowed smart meters which only work on mobile phone signal. So will the Secretary now have urgent talks with ministerial colleagues to put this right and to end this discrimination? Well, I'd be interested to take up that case in more detail with, with the Honourable uh, Lady, but I think it's right to say that the Government, in acting radically on energy price intervention, and indeed with its energy prices bill that seeks to break the link between electricity and gas prices, is taking the sort of action that is absolutely necessary to help households like the Honourable Lady's constituents. And I, of course, will be happy to talk further about the particular disadvantage that her constituents face. Honourable Edmunds. Number seven, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I have frequent discussions with my ministerial colleagues on a range of matters, including the cost of living, and as I have previously said today, we are supporting households and businesses across Wales with cost of living challenges, including on energy costs. Uh, people in, uh, in Carmarthenshire have seen huge increases in uh, heating costs if they are off the gas grid in oil, LPG and solid fuels. The alternative fuel payment uh, of £100 doesn't seem to be to be equivalent to the cap on gas. Will you write to Welsh MPs outlining the methodology used by the British Government to calculate the AFP rate? Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm sure my colleagues in Treasury will be able to, uh, to help with that. But there is one thing that the Honourable Gentleman could do as well if he wants to support people with cost of living challenges in Wales, and that is to persuade his colleagues in Plaid Cymru to vote against Welsh Labour's proposals to revalue council tax bans in Wales, which are going to be absolutely catastrophic for the finances of hundreds of thousands of people across Wales. Wayne David. Yes, Mr Speaker. Prime Minister. Minister. Oh, yeah, sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the four Welsh police forces are adequately funded and will receive combined funding of up to £826.7 million in 2022-23, an increase of up to £45.1 million when compared to the previous financial year. Gwent's funding will be up £159.1 million, an increase of £9.1 million on the previous financial year. When David. Yeah. Mr Speaker, <laughs> South Wales Police has within its area Cardiff, the capital city of Wales and yet it gets no extra resources for the extra responsibilities which comes with it. So will the Secretary of State make representation to his colleagues in the Government to address this situation and this anomaly? Well, Mr Speaker, South Wales funding will be up to £352.5 million in 2022-23, an increase of £19 million on the previous financial year. But if the Honourable Gentleman wants to do something to support police forces in Wales, may I suggest that he talks to the Welsh Labour Government about their failure to hand over the apprenticeship levy, which is being held back by them, and, and should be passed on to police forces. So that order. Just a sec. By the way, when somebody's answering the question, can you please wait till it's been completed? Mr. David was asking the question. Slain Saxby. Question ten, please, Mr. Speaker. Mr Speaker, floating offshore wind projects in the Celtic Sea will contribute to our net zero ambitions, our energy security and generate economic growth and create highly skilled jobs in our coastal communities. And I regularly meet the Crown Estate to discuss progress on bringing forward the ambition of four gigawatts of projects by 2035. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To realise the full potential of the Celtic Sea, we need a timely consenting process from the Welsh Government. has my right honourable friend had with his Welsh counterparts on the consenting process for the development of floating offshore wind sites? Oh. I, I, I congratulate my, my honourable friend for our consistent advocacy for projects in the Celtic Sea as chair of the APPG and indeed the, necess the necessity for securing timely consent is an imperative. I will continue working with the Welsh Government and with all stakeholders to ensure that we can uh, make sure that the, that the huge opportunity that this presents is capitalised upon. Well, Sir James Davis. Number 12, Mr Speaker. 
Mr Speaker, the, the Wales Office has been fully supporting the North Wales Growth Deal as it begins to deliver projects on the ground, and my officials will work closely with all partners in North Wales to ensure that the deal continues to deliver growth and investment across the region. Dr James Davies. Thank you, my honourable friend, for that answer. Perhaps inevitably, not all projects initially identified for delivery through the North Wales Growth Deal can be progressed, and that applies to the Bottle Witham Key Strategic Site. So will my honourable friend encourage a flexible approach to diverting the £10 million of funds that had been earmarked to Bottle Witham to other economic development projects within Denbyshire? Here. Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, it's obviously a matter for Ambition North Wales to bring forward projects for the UK Government and the Welsh Government to approve, but obviously we have taken a very flexible view towards the whole thing. And I can assure the, gov- the uh, honourable gentleman that despite the international financial problems which all countries are facing at the moment, this Government remains absolutely committed to supporting jobs, driving growth and levelling up across the whole of the United Kingdom, including in the Honourable Gentleman's constituency. Bob Blackburn. Speaker. James Day. Mr Speaker, investment zones will be created right across the UK, and our intention in Wales is to design and deliver the policy in working with the Welsh Government and local agencies to increase growth. Thank my right honourable friend for the answer. And is it incumbent on the Welsh Government to cooperate fully uh, with the government to ensure the success for all the people of Wales. Honourable yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 friend puts it extremely well. We have a good example with Freeport. I very much hope the Welsh government.